Buongiorno. Voglio offrire le mie condoglianze per la scomparsa del primo ministro Berlusconi. Signor Ministro, pensiamo a voi, pensiamo al popolo italiano. Io sono felice di poter dare il finito che è venuto a voi per la prima volta qui. Ci siamo visti tante volte nel mondo, anche due settimane fa, a Oslo, per il Ministro di Alessandro. E oggi abbiamo preso il colloquio con il Ministro di Alessandro per quanto riguarda la nostra alleanza che condividiamo e tutti i profondi collegamenti fra i nostri paesi. Abbiamo parlato dell'invasione della Russia in Ucraina e la leadership forte del primo ministro Meloni. All'inizio dell'anno il primo ministro ha fermato una, la bandiera ucraina proprio al sito. Questa è una descrizione forte della solidarietà che tutti noi diamo mostra per l'Ucraina. L'Italia si è fatta Military assistance by supplying generators, uh, electrical equipment to keep Ukraine's power grid up uh, in the face of Russian attacks on that grid. Uh, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars in the humanitarian assistance <laughs> for medicine, for blankets. Naturalmente l'Italia ha, ha accolto più di eh, tantissimi eh, rifugiati in quello che è veramente una comunità già grandissima, 170.000 di questi. E noi continuiamo a dare sostegno a una pace duratura e giusta e l'assistenza sulla base dei principi della Carta delle Nazioni Unite. I nostri alleati italiani sono vitali per la, la stabilità. For Italy's leadership in supporting peace and security in North Africa. Uh, in Tunisia, Italy has played an invaluable role in urging the Tunisian government to implement durable solutions to the country's political and economic challenges. In Libya, we've worked very closely together sì, per to support the UN led process. Per dare uh, to find a path for free per trovare una strada per le elezioni eque e pulite. Abbiamo fatto l'Italia ha fatto tanti investimenti nell'industria petrolifera e questo darà dei benefici a tutta l'area. E queste azioni sono state, sono anche, eh, rappresentano la conversione strategica in tutto l'Atlantico con l'Unione Europea, con la Nato e fra i G7, i paesi del G7. Questa è una stabilità non soltanto nella Mediterranea, ma anche nell'Africa sottosahariana. E noi apprezziamo molto. Abbiamo lavorato con paesi come Giappone e India, come abbiamo lavorato per promuovere una libertà open and secure Indo-Pacific. Uh, as Italy prepares to assume the presidency of the G7 next year, we look forward to Italy's continued leadership on issues of global consequence, uh, where we've been spending a lot of our time together, tackling the climate crisis, combating terrorism, safeguarding democracy, building food security, building global health security. All of these uh, issues are front and center in our common agenda. Uh, what makes our close partnership so productive across these many issues are, of course, the remarkable enduring bonds between our people, ties of shared history, shared values, some 18 million Americans who claim Italian ancestry, including our First Lady, Jill Biden. All of which helps explain why American visitors are returning to Italy in record numbers after the pandemic. So, on behalf of the United States, let me just say to our good friends, our close partners, our close allies, thank you. We are so grateful for the work that we're doing together around the world in many ways è sempre più significativo di sempre, le sfide sono incredibili, le opportunità sono vere e proprio per questo il nostro partenariato fra i nostri paesi è più importante di quanto sia stato prima. Grazie, a lei la parola. Grazie Tony, permettimi di parlare nella mia lingua madre, italiano. Io innanzitutto Voglio ringraziare Anthony Blinken per la flessibilità dimostrata quest'oggi, in un momento molto difficile per me, per l'Italia, e ha accettato di modificare il programma e anticipare i tempi dell'incontro per permettermi di rientrare in Italia. E gliene sono veramente grato. Lo considero un altro gesto di amicizia nei confronti 
dell'Italia e anche lo ringrazio per le condoglianze espresse per la perdita di Silvio Berlusconi e anche oggi stare qua per me è un modo anche per onorare la sua memoria, visto che lui considerava gli Stati Uniti il miglior amico dell'Italia e non ha mai perso occasione per ringraziare tutti quei giovani soldati americani che sono caduti per garantire la libertà e la democrazia in e un Europa. E quando di fronte al congresso in disse, in Europa, and when, quando uh, guardo Congress, la bandiera degli Stati when Uniti, I look at the flag non of the vedo United soltanto States, la bandiera di un paese amico, ma vedo un messaggio di democrazia e di libertà in tutto il mondo. Freedom, all over the su world. queste basi si fonda il rapporto di amicizia tra Italia e gli Stati Uniti. Io sono Italy venuto a ribadire oggi questa solidarietà strategica non legata sulla vicenda del momento, che è un rapporto storico con gli stessi italiani che sono venuti in America, che sono voti fini di altri italiani che sono venuti in America, 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 This bond is very strong and very solid. It is political, it is strategic, and it is based on a joint vision about freedom and democracy. Over the course of our meeting, we um, agreed on all of the big issues, starting from the most dramatic ones, such as the war in the Ukraine. We all want peace, but peace must be a just peace. It must be a peace that uh, respects international uh, rule of law and um, allows freedom to a people that was a victim of invasion. We um, agreed on the kind of work that can be uh, performed formed in the Balkans, where we are part of the, the uh, format, and we can restore peace, and we can uh, favor the entrance of countries that are candidates to become part of the European Union. We want Ukraine to be a future member of the European Union. We agreed on the action to be um, implemented to support peace and stability in the area of the Mediterranean, including Tunisia which for us in Italy is a priority. I have explained to my friend Anthony what the Italian government is doing to achieve stability. We found agreement on the uh, actions to be taken in the Middle East, in North Africa, in the Indo-Pacific area. Italy is in favor of maintaining the status quo in that region. I also stated once again uh, to Anthony, that Italy, with this government, intends to uh, keep um, its position. It will be a stable country, it will be a loyal country, a serious, credible, and reliable. And soon there will be the visit of the uh, Prime Minister, um, Giorgia Meloni, who will meet President Biden in order to strengthen even more the relationship between Italy and the United States, which are two countries that are brothers for us, this transatlantic relationship based on a common vision of NATO and uh, trade exchanges that are very solid. This will allow us to solve any issue that might happen, and we will do so as friends. And under an economic point of view, we are in total agreement. We are two industrialized countries. We know what the issues with raw materials are. And in Africa, we can work in this direction as well together in order to make sure that the market, um, especially for raw materials, is not dominated by others. Therefore, there is um, perfect agreement. There is um, an action towards common purposes. And I am very satisfied of my uh, meeting with the Secretary of State of the United States. I want to thank him for uh, the showing of affection that he had towards me and towards the Berlusconi family and towards Italy. Thank you. We'll take four questions. The first one goes to Shannon Crawford with ABC News. Thank you very much. Grazie. 
As Ukraine begins its counteroffensive, its military reports that it's up against a massive uptick of drones on the battlefield. And more and more reports suggest that some of these drones, or at least some of their key parts, are coming from China. Now, my question to you both is, do you assess that China is ramping up its material support for Russia? And, Mr. Secretary, will you bring this up when you're in Beijing? And also, will you raise China's efforts to spy on the U.S. from Cuba while you're there? And second, Mr. Secretary, we saw another Another American arrested in Moscow over the weekend. Do you have any updates on those case you can, on that case rather that you can share? And more broadly, does this administration's willingness to engage in negotiations over detentions encourage these type of provocative arrests? Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me let me start with the uh, the second question first. Um, uh, we've uh, uh, been seeking to learn more about the uh, apparent detention of. Uh, Travis Leak, and uh, we are working to be uh, not only in, in touch with him and to have the consular access, uh, but also with his family. Uh, my number one priority as Secretary of State is the safety and security of uh, Americans abroad, uh, and uh, this is uh, this is no exception. Uh, so we're working to uh, to gather information to understand exactly what uh, what happened, and of course uh, we will be very focused on this. Look, generally speaking. Um, there is always a balance to be found in working to secure the release of Americans who are being arbitrarily detained, which we've done uh, very successfully over uh, the last couple of years, uh, bringing Americans home from many different places, uh, with, of course, uh, concerns about whether uh, any actions we take might further incentivize countries to engage in this practice. But that's why, even as we've been doing this, we've been imposing penalties, imposing sanctions, including under the Robert Levinson Act, uh, to disincentivize countries from engaging in this practice. At the same time, we're working more and more closely together with other countries that, unfortunately, are similarly situated to us and having been the victims of the arbitrary detention of their citizens, uh, to make it uh, clear to countries that do this that uh, there uh, will be uh, a price to be paid. But it, it is a balance. I believe we can do uh, both things at the same time. At the same time, the countries that engage in this practice momento, paesi che fanno queste cose alla fine simply uh, si allontaneranno e si isoleranno sempre di più perché nel mondo, really twice, le persone nel mondo ci penseranno due o tre volte se vogliono viaggiare in questi paesi perché se c'è il rischio che loro possano essere detenuti in maniera arbitraria, ingiustamente e utilizzati come ostaggi nelle questioni politiche che quel paese può avere con noi o con altri, molti altri paesi nel mondo. E questo alla fine sarà veramente un si daranno la zappa ai suoi piedi perché questo alla fine i paesi non vorranno mantenere i rapporti economici e si isoleranno sempre di più. Noi ci stiamo lavorando ogni giorno su questo e ci assicuriamo per avere questo giusto equilibrio. Per quanto riguarda i droni in Ucraina in Ucraina eh, usati um, dalla Russia. Ci stiamo occupando di questo, uh, soprattutto per il fatto che possono uh, venire dall'Iran e che vengono utilizzati in Ucraina e l'abbiamo visto nel corso di questi mesi, attacchi alle infrastrutture civili e infrastrutture che cercano di sconvolgere. Noi stiamo cercando di sconvolgere questo e di impedire questi rifornimenti. Condividiamo le preoccupazioni Uh, espresse uh, con la nostra uh, controparte in Cina per la possibilità che la fornitura di armi alla Russia per l'Ucraina fosse qualcosa che loro considerassero. Al momento, fino ad oggi, non abbiamo visto che questo è successo. Allo stesso tempo, però, siamo, ci sono preoccupazioni sulle società private che possono fornire tecnologie, includendo anche la tecnologia a doppio uso. E questa è una problematica, è qualcosa che abbiamo già sollevato nel passato e continueremo a farlo. E se questo rimane una preoccupazione. Per quanto riguarda Cuba, quando questa amministrazione è assunto, è andata al potere nel gennaio 2021, noi siamo stati informati su tante questioni sensibili da parte di 
per il Pechino, perché loro vogliono espandere la loro presenza logistica, le loro infrastrutture per, per poter pro progettare potenza militare a distanza dal loro continente. Loro consideravano tantissimi siti intorno al mondo per fare questa, per fare questa espansione, includendo la raccolta di intelligence uh, e infrastrutture di raccolta di intelligence a Cuba. Infatti, sulla base che le informazioni che abbiamo ricevuto, la Cina ha fatto un miglioramento e un ampliamento della sua raccolta delle infrastrutture di intelligence in Cuba nel 2019 e nonostante i tentativi di risolvere questa questione non abbiamo fatto grandi progressi ed avevamo bisogno di un approccio diretto è quello che ha proprio fatto il Presidente Biden di fare questo e, e, proprio, e questo è quello che abbiamo fatto abbiamo uh, seguito il suo approccio in maniera attenta ma secondo noi e, e abbiamo ricevuto anche dei risultati certo non posso dirvi tutti quello che abbiamo fatto abbiamo cominciato con la diplomazia abbiamo intrattenuto dei rapporti con i paesi che vorrebbero aprirsi alla Cina proprio per per farvi capire che quali sono i rischi inerenti a questo e questo noi stiamo continuando a lavorare, siamo, rimaniamo di fiducia nel fatto che potremo risolvere e ottenere tutti i nostri fabbisogni di sicurezza sia a casa che all'estero. Per quanto riguarda la Cina, io ritengo che è un paese che ha presentato una serie di punti per costruire la pace non possa e non debba Peace fornire alcun cannot, tipo di aiuto che non provvede alcun tipo di supporto a un paese come la Russia che ha violato la legge internazionale la Cina credo che la Cina sia orientata non a rafforzare la Russia ma a favorire la Russia ma on the other hand to favor peace therefore i hope that it will go in that direction regarding cuba cuba is a fundamental area or country in a strategic area this is an appeal that i launched to the cuban regime and that is to free many political prisoners and in that case as well we must defend first and foremost, human rights, especially also about Iran, sending drones to the Russian Federation must be stopped. Those who want peace cannot contribute to support those who violated international law and invaded a free and democratic country. Massimo Gaggi with Corriere della Sera. Thank you for having us, um, to both of you. Uh, Tunisia is the uh, top of uh, an iceberg of a deep crisis uh, in Africa. Uh, given that a plan to stabilize uh, this uh, continent is essential for Europe and frankly for our democracies, do you see room for a pragmatic approach to avoid uh, the default of uh, Tunisia given that uh, uh, the reservations of IMF, as far as I understand, are more based on market uh, economy issues more than on uh, uh, human rights issues. And if I may, uh, specifically to you, Mr. Secretary, uh, do you have any uh, memories specifically on uh, Silvio Berlusconi uh, that was recently criticized for his position on Ukraine, but th that I remember that long ago it was a bridge to keep uh, Putin uh, very close to NATO and also uh, to allow Mr. Erdogan to be uh, as integrated as possible in the European Union. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to start, Antonio, if there's anything you want to uh, add, of course. On, on Tunisia, we uh, very much share the concern uh, that, that Italy has uh, and that other partners have about the economic situation in Tunisia. Uh, as well as uh, as well as political challenges, and very much appreciate the the work that's being done, including by the delegation led by Prime Minister Maloney and also uh, the um, uh, president um, of the um, uh, EU Commission, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, to um, visit and to see if there's a way forward. Uh, 
we very much would welcome the Tunisian government presenting a uh, revised reform plan uh, to, uh, to the IMF and uh, for the IMF to uh, be able to act on the, uh, the plan presented. But these are sovereign decisions. This is a sovereign decision for Tunisia. It's not a decision for us or anyone else uh, to make. Uh, but it's clear that Tunisia needs um, additional assistance if it is going to avoid falling off the, uh, the proverbial economic cliff. And what the uh, EU and Italy have done, I think, is a, an important step, but something more comprehensive uh, that, in our judgment, the IMF can best provide uh, would, be, uh, would be important to actually helping Tunisia get on a sustainable and positive path. Uh, but the decisions that are involved really are decisions for Tunisia to make. Uh, but we would very much support um, finding some way uh, forward because it's important for Tunisia, but uh, it's also, I think, important for the region. It's important, uh, it's important for Europe, and we have a stake as well in Tunisia's success. Uh, after the Arab Spring, Tunisia was one of the um, most important bright spots in its uh, trajectory, something that I had the opportunity to be involved in when I was last in government. Uh, and so we want to see Tunisia succeed. Uh, and we want to find ways to provide the support necessary for its success. Uh, but fundamentally, the government um, in Tunisia has to make decisions about how it wants to proceed. Uh, and we would hope that there's a practical way forward um, that um, we can find with, uh, as necessary, appropriate flexibility. Uh, and of course, we're in very close uh, contact, um, coordination, with the government of Italy, uh, as well as with other partners in Europe on this, we have the same objective. Um, and then finally, with regard to, uh, to Prime Minister Berlusconi, uh, I must say I never had the opportunity uh, to, uh, uh, to meet him or, or to, to work with him. He was uh, obviously a tremendously significant figure uh, in the life of Italy, in the political life, in the public life uh, of the country. Um, many uh, American administrations um, worked with him uh, over, over the years. And uh, for me, not having known him, I simply want to extend my condolences uh, to, to his family, because let's not never forget in these situations the people who are affected first and foremost uh, is, the, is the family, uh, but also to the Italian people for their loss. Thank you very much. On uh, Tunisia, informed the Secretary General on the chip Prime Minister Meloni to Tunisia. We want to, to achieve good solutions. We want to pave the way for an agreement. Of course, for, for us, we need to be pragmatic, to talk, to talk, to talk with the Tunisians for achieving an agreement between Tunisia, the European Union, Italy, also monetary fund, and for this also the, the, the position of the, the, the United States is very, very, very important. But we need to, to work step by step. The idea of the Italian is to put money, the first step of money, then reforms, without reforms, not the second step. This, but we need to talk, we need to, to achieve good solution for the stability, because the stability of Tunisia, as the stability of Libya, is crucial for the stability of the Mediterranean region. Italy is strongly engaged in this. We will work in contact with our European friends, but also our American friends, for achieving good results, for in favor of the stability, peace, against illegal immigration, against Against terrorism all together. This is a priority for everybody. Question Zeba Warsi with PBS NewsHour. Thank you so much. First, to you both on Sweden's bid to join NATO. Mr. Secretary, you called Turkey's newly appointed foreign minister and emphasized the need for Sweden to be part of NATO. Sweden has announced that it will extradite a self-proclaimed PKK supporter. Do you believe that will satisfy, satisfy President Erdogan, or rather Turkey, to clear the path for Sweden uh, to join NATO ahead of the NATO summit? And secondly, on the Nipro Dam disaster, uh, do you have an update to share with us uh, based on intelligence reports, uh, can you say with absolute certainty that the Russians were behind it? And more broadly, what kind of an impact has that had on the ongoing counteroffensive? Thank you. Um, on Sweden and, uh, and NATO, um, 
a few things. First, as we've so, said all along, if you look uh, in the context of history, if you look at this historically, the, the process for both Finland and, and Sweden has been uh, very, very rapid, uh, and appropriately so, given the fact that both countries um, have been longtime partners of NATO, uh, among the strongest democracies in the world, members of the European Union, uh, and, of course, the challenge posed to European security by Russia's aggression in Ukraine makes the matter uh, even more urgent. Um, as I also said, it's a process, and it's appropriate that during that process every member of the alliance uh, be able to raise uh, any concerns or issues that it, that it might have. Uh, that's especially true because a big part of being a member of NATO is the Article 5 commitment for each member to come to the defense uh, of any other member if they're the um, subject of aggression. So that process has, has worked, and in the course of it, uh, Turkey was able to raise some concerns that it had. Uh, Finland and Sweden have both addressed those concerns and, in our judgment, addressed them uh, appropriately and effectively. Uh, there is, I think, scheduled for later this meet, week another meeting between Turkey and uh, Sweden and uh, NATO uh, to look at where things are, but in our judgment, and as important, in the judgment of virtually every other ally in NATO, and Antonio and I were just in a meeting with our colleagues a couple of weeks ago, each and every one um, expressed the conviction that now is the time for Sweden to um, formally join the alliance for the accession process to be complete. Um, and that's certainly the judgment of the United States. So our expectation is that uh, this will happen by the time of the Vilnius Summit in July, and that's what uh, we're looking to see take place over the coming weeks. On the dam, we don't have um, any further information on it, exactly what happened. Um, we do know that it's having catastrophic effects uh, on Ukraine. Um, and that's um, in and of itself. E, uh, ciò a terrible thing, magnified, of course, uh, by the fact that this is happening in the midst of, 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 of Russia's broader aggression uh, against Ukraine. We don't have any further information on exactly uh, what caused uh, the, uh, the dam to collapse. Uh, uh, of course, there was a lot of damage that was caused by the dam to collapse. Uh, 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 Russia started this war. Uh, 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 Russia uh, uh, is, uh, was actually uh, in control La Russia, of the dam. Uh, deteneva il controllo della diga so e vediamo i risultati che hanno un effetto così nefasto su così tanti ucraini. L'Italia è fortemente a favore uh, del uh, fatto che la Svezia entri a far parte della NATO e noi lavoriamo per ottenere questo obiettivo. In quanto membro della NATO, noi vogliamo uh, avere la Svezia uh, all'incontro del Vilnius e lavoreremo per raggiungere questo obiettivo. Sull'altro punto non abbiamo informazioni chiare e dunque è meglio uh, rimanere in silenzio. Noi vogliamo uh, proteggere la popolazione. Anche la regione di Zaporizia è molto in pericolo. The meeting of the, the, net, the um, United Nations Assembly. E come è stato proposto nell'ambito della Zaporizia uh, Minister Tajani and Secretary Blinken, Domanda how do you evaluate uh, what's happening Tajani. on the ground in Ukraine with the counteroffensive and mm, where, we, where could it lead eventually? And uh, e another question, what are the next steps the cooperation between Ukraine and NATO? I'm thinking about the next summit and is it possible that Ukraine joins NATO? Well, a de facto joint partnership, not the euro. Thank you. Um, Credo che si debba seguire il percorso avviato già da qualche anno per avere poi l'Ucraina membro the Ukraine become an operational member of NATO. I believe that 
a, a substantial first step that can lead into this direction would be that of establishing a sort of NATO council with Ukraine that can see the involvement of Ukraine also in terms of information sharing and political information at NATO level. And this could be a first step towards um, entering NATO by the Ukraine. Regarding the counteroffensive, I hope that it can help to uh, make steps towards peace because we all want peace. We are helping Ukraine because we want peace, because if we did not help Ukraine, Ukraine would be invaded and we would have a threat that is much greater towards Europe and Georgia, Moldova, and many other countries would be at great risk. Therefore, we're doing this to defend freedom and democracy. But we do want peace. So if this counteroffensive is useful to uh, have the Russians uh, retreat back from the Ukraine, well, this will uh, give freedom back to Ukraine. Counteroffensive. These are, of course, uh, early days. So much to soon uh, to say exactly where this is going. Uh, but I think it's uh, important to note that uh, as a result of more than 50 countries uh, coming together in support of Ukraine and particularly the courage and tenacity of uh, Ukraine's military and its people, um, we are uh, confident that they will continue to have success in what they're trying to achieve, which is to take back the land that's been seized from them by Russia. It's very important to note that in terms of what President Putin was trying to achieve in Ukraine, it's already been a strategic failure because the objective that Putin had, that he stated himself, was to erase Ukraine from the map, to eliminate its independence, and to absorb Ukraine in one fashion or another into Russia. That has failed, and it cannot succeed. But it remains the case that Russia has uh, illegally seized almost 20 percent of Ukraine. Ukraine's territory, and we both want Italy, the United States, in fact, the Ukrainian people more than anyone want peace, but it needs to be a just and durable peace, and by just we mean a peace that basically reflects the principles of the United Nations Charter, including our territorial integrity and sovereignty, and by durable we mean a peace that doesn't simply leave things in a place where Russia can rest, rearm, and reattack six months later, a year later, uh, two years later. So this is what we're working toward. Uh, Ukraine's success in the, the counteroffensive would do two things. It would strengthen its position at any negotiating table that emerges, and it may have the effect as well of uh, actually um, causing Putin to finally focus on negotiating an end to the war that he started. Uh, and in that sense, it can actually bring peace closer, not put it further away. So we will continue to do two things, and we're determined at this. Um, We'll continue to maximize our support to Ukraine now so that it can have success on the battlefield. But also, our enduring support is critical. Support for Ukraine so that it can build up over time a strong deterrent and defense capacity uh, for its military so that in the future, if Russia tries to pursue another aggression, it uh, has the chance to deter that and, if necessarily, effectively defend against it, but also to support uh, its economy, to support its integration with the European Union, where Italy is a leading, uh, a leading voice, and, of course, the ongoing process of democratic reform. Uh, these, these two things, it's military strength and its economic and democratic strength, these are the, um, the critical things that uh, Ukraine needs to succeed, not only to survive, but to thrive going forward. And it also sends a very strong message to President Putin that to the extent he believes that he will outlast Ukraine, that he will outlast uh, our countries, he's wrong. Uh, and that we're committed to Ukraine not just in the moment, but for the, uh, the long term as well. And that gets me to the NATO summit, 
I think, uh, without getting ahead of ourselves, I think what you can expect to see at the NATO summit is a robust package of both political and practical support for Ukraine going forward. Uh, and this, too, I think will send a very strong message to President Putin that he can't simply try to outlast any of us, that uh, we're all here to stay, we're determined, uh, the Ukrainian people, we all want peace, but again, it has to be just, it has to be durable, and if and when Russia is prepared to engage on that basis, we'll all be prepared to do that. But what we've seen to date uh, is uh, that it's not prepared to do that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.